In this video, we're going to take a look at a variety of homologous series of compounds in organic chemistry, and we're going to look at both their class name as well as their functional group name and some examples. So by the end of this video, we should be able to identify a variety of different homologous series. So a couple of pieces of terminology we do need to keep in mind here as we go through these homologous series is that a homologous series is also known as its class name. So the class is just the family of organic compounds that we have. The functional group or the functional group name on the other hand, a functional group is an atom or a group of atoms in a molecule that gives it its characteristic chemical properties. So this is the reactive part of the molecule. So this is the reactive part. And when we get into and take a look at some reactions in other videos, you'll see that the functional group is the part that is taking part in those chemical reactions. So each functional group does form the basis of a homologous series. Um, so let's kind of take a look at a few of them. We'll start with alkanes. Alkanes are ones that we saw in a previous video. Their functional group, they don't really have a functional group per se, but if we were to write one out, it'd just be the C, single bonded C um, bond. Uh, its functional group name is called alkyl. And an example is shown here. So you can see in our example, we have a variety of carbons single bonded to other carbons here. Okay, and that would be the homologous series that is called alkanes or has the functional group alkyl groups. Our next one, alkenes, have a carbon-carbon double bond as its functional group. So its functional group name is alkeno, um, and we'll get into some naming later, but this will make more sense. So if you take a look at our example here, we have a carbon to carbon chain, but we do have one carbon double bonded to another carbon here. And so that would be the alkeno functional group, and this would be an alkene class of organic compounds. The next one, alkynes, um, they have a carbon-carbon triple bond. They're called alkyno. And in the example here, you can see the carbon-carbon triple bond. All right, moving on, we've got alcohols. So alcohols have a some kind of carbon chain and their functional group is this OH group that is attached to the carbon-carbon um, the -carbon chain. Now, the R here just means that it's any alkyl group. Um, so it could be alkyl, it could be alkenol, it could be alkyno, um, but really it's any kind of carbon chain and we usually just use that as a way to represent, could be any kind of carbon chain. Uh, the name for its functional group is called hydroxyl. So OH represents a hydrogen and an oxygen, so that's where hydroxyl is coming from. And you can see that OH in our example here. So this compound would be an alcohol. The next one here, ether. Uh, this one's uh, functional group is that it's got some sort of um, alkyl group on either side of an oxygen. Um, so the alkyl groups can be the same or they can be different, which is why it's represented by R and R prime here. Just sort of telling you that the R's are not necessarily the same thing. Um, so its functional group is called an ether, and you can see the example here where the oxygen is connected to two other carbon-containing groups. All right, so uh, next sort of series here, aldehydes. Aldehydes have a functional group where we have a carbon double bonded to an oxygen, which is then attached to a hydrogen. And then the other side is uh, connected to some sort of alkyl group. This is called a carbonyl. Um, and you can see in this example here that at the very end is our aldehyde. Next one up, ketones. Ketones kind of look similar to aldehydes. They have a carbon double bonded to the oxygen, but instead of um, just the alkyl group on one side, it has alkyl groups on both sides of that carbon uh, connected to the oxygen. 
So its functional group is also carbonyl, and the carbonyl really just means the C double bonded to the O. Um, and you can see in our example here, we got the C double bonded to O, and it's attached to two other carbon-containing chains. Next one up, uh, carboxylic acid. Kind of looks like the ones above. We've got a C double bonded to O, but then it has an OH attached to it, and the other side has an alkyl group. So this one's called, uh, functional group name is carboxyl. And you can see in our example here, uh, at the end of our chain, we got our C double bonded to O and then bonded to an OH. And then we have another alkyl group attached to that. Uh, next one up, halogenoalkane. That is pretty much any kind of carbon containing chain that has a halogen attached to it somewhere. The more, more likely ones are chlorine, bromine, and iodine. You could have fluorine in there as well. Um, so here's an example of a halogenoalkane. Okay, four more, actually no, sorry, I lie. Five more we need to go through. So the four here, uh, we've got amines. Now amines, there's three different types. We could have just an NH2, we could have an N NH, so a nitrogen attached to a hydrogen and an alkyl group, or we can have an NR2, so a nitrogen attached to two alkyl groups. Its functional group name is an amine. You can see the amine here on this example. Um, the other two are, for example, you could substitute out any of these hydrogens with another alkyl group. Uh, so that's where the three sort of variations are coming from. Next one, uh, esters, they have a carbonyl group, so C double bonded O, and then it's bonded to an oxygen, which is bonded to another alkyl group and then another alkyl group on the C double bond O side. So this is called an ester in terms of its functional group name. And you can see that functional group here in the molecule where we have a C double bonded to O bonded to an oxygen and alkyl group here, and then another alkyl group here. Uh, next one, nitriles, they have a C triple bonded to a nitrogen. So this is called also functional group name is the same as its class name. It's called a nitrile. And here it is in our example. And finally, amides. Amides have a C double bonded to an O, and then that's bonded to an amine group. Um, so this is our functional group here. It's called a carboxamide. And you can see that in our example here. The last uh, class name and uh, functional group name we do need to go through are those compounds containing benzene. Now, um, benzenes are sort of a class of molecules that are considered to be aromatic. Um, and aromatic just means that they've got this benzene ring that um, has the alternating double and single bonds. Although, as we know, those uh, bonds are actually all the same length because of delocalized pi electrons. Um, if a compound doesn't have a benzene ring, it's called aliphatic. So that's just another term. So aliphatic compounds are your alkanes, alkenes, uh, enes, and alkynes. All right. Now you can draw... Uh, resonance structures for benzene, or you can draw it as this structure here where you have a hexagon and a ring in the middle. The ring just denotes those delocalized pi electrons. So um, it's just another way to represent it. Its class name is called arene. So aromatic, and then the enes come from the fact that there are double bonds uh, shown in the structure. And its functional group name is called phenyl. So an example might be something like this molecule here where we have, um, you know, a substituted group on there, but our functional group is shown as the benzene ring here. Now I've shown you a lot of homologous series and I just do just kind of want to revisit the idea of boiling points of homologous series, because even though we see the trend of increasing boiling points as the number of carbons go up, where the boiling points start with various different homologous series is going to be dictated by the intermolecular forces present. So just as a quick example here, uh, if you recall, our alkanes is shown with this line here. With alcohols, our alcohols 
do still increase, but they start at a much higher point, and that's because these guys have hydrogen bonding, whereas the alkanes are only dictated by London dispersion forces. Um, so you do need to kind of take a look at the functional groups present and what type of bonding, polarity that you have within those compounds because then that will di dictate the intermolecular forces present, which will then dictate sort of where this trend of increasing boiling points or melting points starts for these homologous series. That's it then for this video. We'll see you in the next one.